Hi, it's Jenny here from Jenny Wren Floristry Arts and Crafts. Today I've got a little spring wedding bouquet in my hand and doing my wedding preparations for this weekend, it's really struck me and I've sort of googled it on YouTube that there's no real wedding bouquet that caters for people who have bad hay fever and allergies from flowers. So a lot of my brides have contacted me to say they would rather use artificial flowers and I do like artificial flowers but for a wedding bouquet I just feel they're rather stiff. So whenever I've made bouquets I've always incorporated dried flowers with the faux flowers but in this particular video, I'm going to be incorporating flowers, faux flowers, but with fresh flowers. Now, they wanted sunflowers, and believe it or not, sunflowers are the most pollen-heavy flowers that you can ever imagine for people who have hay fever. So I'll be mixing the faux flowers, the sunflowers, with some fresh flowers, and these fresh flowers are brilliant in the sense that they do not give off a lot of pollen so they're quite safe for pollen sufferers. I will put a link here for other flowers that you can use relatively safely but it's always good to expose the people beforehand to see if there's any irritation because there's no ways that you want red eyes on your wedding day or somebody wanting to give you tissues but for the wrong reasons not for the little you know the gentle tender emotional moment but more dabbing your eyes and streaming noses because you're allergic to the pollen that the flowers are getting off so i'm going to give you a little breakdown of what i'm going to use i'm going to show you how to make a bridal bouquet so yeah let's get started Right, so you're going to need a few supplies apart from your flowers. You're going to need some nippers because of course both flowers have wire in so they're quite tough to cut. You're going to need some floral tape because you need to, you know, lengthen your stems and that's a good way of doing that. And of course anything you're going to lengthen your stems by, whether it be kebab sticks, my favourite go-to <laughs> um, Material or else coarse wire, which is readily available from any floristry or in order online, etc. Right, I'm set up to start working. From the faux flower point of view, as mentioned, I'm going to use these sunflowers and they really look fantastic. You wouldn't think that they are faux. Um, I also saw some mimosa, um, so I'm going to use some mimosa. From the fresh flowers, I'm going to be using this lovely eucalyptus. I'm also going to be using the snapdragons as they are really good for hay fever sufferers. Um, this is soliester, um, even people who think goldenrod gives them hay fever, it doesn't, so I'm using some soliester. I'm also using some wax flour and um, I'm also going to be using just one of these lovely succulents, this rosette shaped succulent. What I like my buyers to do is send me a photos of what they like and in this particular bouquet um, that they sent me they had featured a succulent which I thought was lovely and of course succulents are great for people who suffer from hay fever as well. Right, I'm going to prepare the material obviously, things like succulents need to be lengthened which I will do with a simple kebab stick and wire that. Um, and then also um, the long stem of mimosa I'm just going to snip off and I'm also going to lengthen them as well. I like to use a kebab stick because the one side is pointy and it's quite easy to insert it in the stem. Obviously you can use wire as well. The reason why I snip and tape these is because from one stem you can actually get about 10 to 12 usable flowers. Because the uh, faux flowers are very expensive actually so you, you really should be doing this because otherwise you're going to be 
wasting a lot of money because ordinarily these flowers would be covered within the bouquet. You only really need the tops peeping out really. So yeah, that's just a tip for you. I've got my mirror here because that also helps me look what the bouquet is going to look like from the front. I've also cleaned all my, the greenery below the water line or below, or below where I hold the bouquet. It's really important to prepare all your material very simply for argument's sake with the solidago i just take my hand and just strip it if your hands are not as uh you know hardened as mine you could just wear gloves garden gloves or even just a bit of paper plastic and just to protect your hands going down so yeah preparing uh, your material is really important right so let's start now i'm going to start with the sunflowers my sort of central point and I like it because it's not just one flower itself it's got these little buds coming off and then I'm just going to put a bit of greenery around it not too much just so that I get a general sort of around the center and then I'm going to start popping the sunflowers around the edges. Very lucky with these uh, first sunflowers. They look really realistic, like I've already said to you, but also they're slightly different sizes, which if you think about nature, nothing is exactly the same size. So that's really, really um, fortunate when you're choosing your flowers. Try and get a little bit of variation in size as well. They won't be so staid. I'm simply just arranging them around the sort of edge, just looking in the mirror. Great. Now with the snapdragons, I'm just going to place them together just to give a little bit of height. And obviously while you're arranging, everything's going to move. So you just adjust as you go through. What I'm doing here is I'm holding my hands in like a circle shape like this and then all I'm doing is I'm just threading them through that and it's just if I want to get something through you just twist it like this and it should go through quite easily and that's why it's really important to Clean your stems really well so you can get them through. Okay, um, now I've got those through. Now I'm just going to thread um, my filler around to give it a little bit of structure. I think I'm just going to put my soliesta around or solidago it's called. It's different from gold. I think it's also called golden rod and I know it gets a bad rap um, but the pollen is very heavy so it doesn't really get windborne very much so. It's um, not a bad one to use for people with aching perceptors. And you can see the lovely eucalyptus is coming through and just softening. I've all put some more in, uh, but this is just giving it a little bit more structure. And now I think I will put my wax flower through as well. You don't need a lot of variety to make it very interesting. And you just sort of thread them through. Glass. got a lovely lemony kind of scent to it as well quite hardy I have tried to grow this I know they say it's easy to grow but I don't find it that easy to grow I've tried it in Spain and apparently it needs really good draining soil well draining soil and in Spain it's a lot of clay so that's potentially an issue there yeah I'm fairly happy with how this is developing and I'm just going to pop um, the succulent in even though that there's one that's it's quite a difficult one to place in the sense that it needs to be balanced still but I think that's going to look nice just there I'm bring these around and then just my mimosa to poke through as well which will look really pretty
and then just um, a little more, a little bit of eucalyptus brown, and I think we're done. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It's really lovely. Right, snip it down. I would suggest I'm going to I'm making this um a oh god it's just I use my secateurs and things so much they're really getting blunt. I need to go and buy some more. There's some apparently some really good ones on the market, but I can't remember the name. I think I'll gift myself something. I'm just going to use some twine to tie off. You can use elastic bands, you can use tape, you can use floral tape, whatever. Whatever you want. What have you got handy? Secret is, is whenever you're tying off to make sure you don't crush your stems because then of course, even though they've got, even though it's faux flowers, there are fresh flowers there and I need to be able, them to get, to be able to get water. Now that I have tied off the bouquet with twine, I'm simply taking the twine and winding it down sort of the top part of the stem what I normally do is I normally leave a little bow at the back of the bouquet so when they pick it up they know which side to hold it because I do have normally a front and a back to my bouquets so I normally just tie a little bow at the back of the bouquet and that sort of just when she picks it up she knows which side to hold it you obviously want the best view for the camera and I also slightly um, make it fat, flatter at the back just so that um, she doesn't get the things on the dress or anything like that. So yep, that's what I do. So I'm really happy with the bouquets. Yes, there's two of them. Um, these are for a couple of brides and I've got five more bridesmaids bouquets to make and I've also got buttonholes um, to make so that's going to be really lovely um I will say that if you're going to make the your own wedding flowers do practice beforehand it can be quite stressful but of course if you're going to use all faux, faux flowers it's going to be a lot easier and you can make them far in advance and being faux you can take them apart put them together again and you're not going to have an issue with that Remember, you can mix things up. You don't just have to keep it to one medium. Faux, dried, faux, silk, faux, faux, whatever. I can't even, I'm doing some tongue twisters here. But all I'm just saying is don't be limited about um, the kind of materials you use. They all go well together. They're so realistic. You can obviously, you know, mix and match. I thought I would just show you one of the faux flower wedding bouquets that I have made. And this is the one where I have incorporated the dried flowers. In this case, we've got the lovely pampas grass. And here, what I think would make a beautiful flower girl bouquet is this little round one of roses. Again, using some lovely little grasses, some dry eucalyptus and the pampas grass. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you got inspired. See you again soon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Thanks so much. Bye.